in today's service. God, we pray that you have moved in a mighty way. Oh, God, we come to hear a word from you, and we pray that you have your way in this service. Continue touching our bishop, first lady, all the pastors, all the elders, prophets and teachers, and the ministers, and the members. God, watch over us, God. Continue watching over us in these terrible times. And we'll be mindful to give your name all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's read our scriptures. Amen. I don't see that. We didn't have to keep move on. This technology stuff, we, we're getting it. But if you're able to turn, let's read it. One, two, three, read. Salvation from day to day. Third. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. Our Father, you are holy. We give you glory and we bless your name. Our Father, you are holy. Just a little bit. We give you glory and we bless your name. Our Father, come on. You are holy. Woo. We give you glory and we bless our Father. Your name, our Father. You say He's is holy. Come you on. You are holy. We give you glory. We give you glory. And we bless your name. Father, you are holy. We give you glory. And we bless your name, our Father. You are holy. We give you glory. And we bless your name our father he's a great god you are whole everybody we give you glory and we bless say it again your our name father. our father you are whole you are whole we give you glory we give you glory and we bless your name our father you are holy, we give you glory, and we bless your name, our Father. You are holy, we give you glory, and we bless your name, our Father. Woo. You are holy, we give you glory. We give you glory, and we bless our Father. Your name, our Father. Woo! You are holy. You are holy. We give you glory. We give you job. glory, and we bless Woo. your name. Bless your name. Bless your we name. bless your name. We, bless your we name. give your name the glory. Everybody say. Nobody greater than he is. He is omnipotent. He is a great God. And we bless his name. And we bless your name. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. We give you glory. We give you glory. Come on. And we bless your name. Is he been good to you? Is he been awesome to you? What water? Get on your feet right here, everybody. Give him glory right here. And we bless How? your name. I praise your name. I praise, I praise, I praise, I praise your praise name. He you give you glory. Hallelujah. This is it. And we bless your name. Woo. 
Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against the King? No one can. No one will. Two hands. Oh. Oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Oh. Oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Who can stand against the Lord? Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one can. No one will. No one will. Who can stand against the king? Who can stand against the king? No one can. No one can. No one will. No one will. One hand lifted up. Well, come on. They say that thing trying to pick up again. Tell your neighbor, don't panic. Don't panic. Yeah. I got Bishop Word last Sunday. If he did it the first time. Yeah. Yeah. You talking like he ain't never did it. Look at your neighbor and say, don't panic. Stay calm. He still got it. He's still in his hand. He's still in control. I got another. Wait, wait. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy Lord God told this morning early the morning my song shall rise to Let's do it one more time. This time I want you to stand. Let's tell him he's holy. Holy, holy, holy. Hey, no, 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 no. Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. God, three person. Three person. Oh, blessed now for about one minute, I want you to lift two of your hands and begin to worship him. That's what he told me to do this week. Don't worry about what's going on out there. Worry about what you're giving me. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of God. One more time. God in three parts. Oh, God. Praise 
Give him a praise. Worship is in this house. You are in. That's it, Kenny. Oh, we bless his name. Oh, God in. Three. Him right now, oh, boy. one more time, one more time. Woo. Give God a praise if you can. He deserves all the praise this morning. So glad to see you in the house of the Lord today. But this is another day that the Lord has made, and we all shall rejoice. And be glad in this day. It is a blessing to see you. Even though the virus has seemed to have risen up, rise up again. A lot of people are catching it. Some don't know what to do. Thank God we are still here. And we thank God that the church is still open. The church is still open. And we just praise God. It's offering time here in Woodbury. Oh, I need to get somebody to give somebody some hand clapping right there. It's offering time. And this is the time where all of us can be blessed. For those of you in the rid of your land, you're going on the cash app, or you're mailing in. We thank you. Thank you for being a blessing to us. We ask all of the deacon at this time, they will come. And as they come, and read Malachi 3 and 8 and 10 here. Will a man rob God? I know we're familiar with Elder Thomas saying that, but he's not here today. So will a man rob God? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're wrong. Yet have ye have robbed me, but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me. This is God talking here, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now. Here will said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. Amen. God would bless you so much that you have to call your neighbors and say, come and get some of this blessing. <laughs> He's just that kind of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your people on this morning. We pray now, God, that we're about to receive this offering. We pray that you would touch the heart of your people, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, help them to sow a seed in good ground this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody say amen. At this time, the deacon can receive your offering. If you need an envelope, just raise your hand, and they'll make sure you get one. Money, money. God is good. It is so good to be here. While they're doing that, I'm going to read some scripture here. Matthew 10 and 7 and 8 say, As you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, clean the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received, freely give. That's what we're doing this morning. We are freely giving. Luke 6 and 38 said, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. I like that. Good measure. Press down and 
shaking together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom? <laughs> For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. It's how you give, that's how it's going to come back. Acts 20 and 35 say, I have showed you all things. How that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the works of the Lord Jesus. How he said it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. So untie them hands. Untie them hands and give unto the Lord. It's more blessed. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 says, anybody else? Can make sure you got all the envelopes? Every man according as he purposed in his heart. So let him give. Not grudging. Or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. We want you to be glad about this giving this morning. For God has blessed you to have what you have. You got a job, God bless you to get that job. Don't, don't think no other why. Because if it had not been the Lord, you wouldn't be there. And may I say this too? Uh -huh, yeah, you're on Social Security too, too. But if the law had not been, if the law had not made a way, <laughs> you wouldn't be getting that either. Thank the Lord. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Lord. Ain't God good? God is good. Are we finished? Everybody receive. At this time. Let's receive our sister pastor, Pastor Matt Weaver. Sing and bring the bishop. Praise the Lord. Amen. Isn't it good to be back in the house of the Lord? I see my folks here from Florida. Where your hand? Where your hand? And my nieces and great nieces and nephews and I don't know what the baby is. My great 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 somebody. <laughs> we so glad to have them with us. Amen. There's a lot going on in Florida, so it's good to be here. We're a little safer, not that much, but uh, God is keeping us, isn't He? A lot is going on in our world, but I told the Lord, help me to hold out until my day is done. I need about three praise team worshipers to come up here and help me with this. Here I am to worship. Uh, do I have to call your name? Anybody? Anybody? Y'all move too slow to them anoint to be done gone by the time y'all get here. What? Praise the Lord. Amen. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You all took care of the lovely. All took care of the worthy. All together wondrous for to me. Can I say it again? Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow. Here I am to say, You're, you're my God. You're Listen, listen. I never know how much it costs to see my sins upon. Can you help me say?
see my sin. Hang it on that cross. Everybody lift your hand and tell him I never know how much it costs. You sacrificed your life. You gave your life for me. Hang it on that cross. Thank you, Jesus. So here I am to worship. Here I am. Here I am. You're my, you're my God. You are all together. You're so worthy. My God, a sweet perfume you are. That's who you are. You're so lovely to me. Everyone resting on your feet. There's a word from the Lord. Thank you. There's a word from the Lord today. How many are ready for a word? When the enemy start attacking, making his attack in the family. I still say I'm going to hold on. I ain't got nowhere else I can go. I don't know about y'all. Maybe y'all got somewhere y'all can go. But I'm so safe in the arms of Jesus. I'm so safe in the arms of Jesus. As long as I know he got me, I, I'm going to make it. Tell, tell yourself, tell yourself, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Because he paid the ultimate sacrifice. He didn't have to do it. I was filthy. My God, my soul was black. But he looked at me and said, you worth it. How many know you're worth it? I don't care what they call you, black sheep, low sheep, white sheep, whatever they call you, you're worth it. How much it costs. To see my sin hanging on that cross. As we get ready to receive the prelay, the watchman of this house, the man of God that has set in order. If we listen to the word, we can leave here and go on to heaven. Hallelujah. Bless our God. I ain't got to go back home to get nothing. Somebody say, you may have a little change at home. It can stay. You can have it. Because when he come, I'm saying, I'm ready, God. I'm ready, God. I didn't live 50 some years for you not to make it to heaven. I got to make it. If it be living right, I'm going to make it. As we proceed this evening, our pastor, the watchman of this house, let's listen and hear a word from God that's going to protect us and keep us in this evil day. Will you punch your hand toward the man of God? Punch your hand and say, Preach, Bishop. Say it again, Preach, Bishop. One more time for the Holy Ghost. Preach, Bishop. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap if you will. Come on, clap those hands with Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the glory of God. Here I am to worship. Here I am to worship. Hallelujah. We begin with a series of messages concerning, amen, being crucified with him, amen, being crucified with Christ, amen, so we, it took a lot for him to go to that cross, amen, but we thank God he did that, don't we, amen, and we received our freedom by him being on the cross, we're glad to be here again in the house of worship, amen, amen, God has taken care of us, and we just thank God, amen, for his goodness, the coronavirus has spiked up. Delta virus is going around. It's a little, they say it's more infected than, amen, the early that we had in the year. But, amen, God takes care of his people. Amen. Appreciate all of you for pressing your way to be here with us. Amen. And thank you for coming, amen, to celebrate with God. And now that we're in the church, we plan planning on being right here. We're going to keep believing God, keep trusting 
God was just me and I was service. Normally we'd be here for 2.30, 3 o'clock. Hello up in here. And I see that you all are enjoying the service. But we thank God for all that he's doing. Thank God for the Florida people up in the house. Florida's in the house. Amen. God is good. I tell you, God is good all the time. Amen. Uh, yesterday I had an opportunity to go to Bishop Donovan Miller's church. Amen. He had, uh, he's connected, amen, with the Bible school. And they had that first graduation service, this commencement on yesterday. Amen. He invited me to be the commencement speaker. We just, amen, celebrated over there. And really, God just met us. And we just thank God, amen, for that. Amen. Amen. And today, we're just expecting God to do great and mighty things for his goodness. Also, uh, this coming Sunday, August 15th is what? Hello, up in the house. Amen. Bishop's birthday, so we can look for everybody to do what we normally do. Amen. And, amen. God is good. If you don't know First Lady's Cash App, amen, just call and she'll give it to you. Amen. God is good. It's, as Pastor Parks would say, it's a poor frog. So we don't want to be a poor frog, but we got to be a frog. We'll be a frog, but we don't want to be a poor frog. Praise his own pun. Amen. So God is good. And the Bible said you have not because you ask not. So we are going through this coronavirus right now. So we better, we better ask. Hello. And we thank God. Amen. For his goodness. Move right on into the word of God on today. Amen. You'll find us. Amen. In the book of Amen. In the book of First Corinthians. Jeff, can you look on my desk? And bring my glasses. If it's not, it's in my bag. Amen. God is good. First Corinthians, the 15th chapter, looking at, amen, verse 31. We've been dealing with the series of message being crucified. Being crucified with Christ. Being crucified with Christ. In the 15th chapter, amen, of the book of First Corinthians, amen, looking at that 31st verse, amen, if you have it, say amen. amen. In that verse, Paul is talking about the things that he had to go through, the things that he suffered, the things that he dealt with. And in that 31st verse, amen, Paul, amen, he's saying, I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then Paul said, I die daily. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Father, as we honor your word on the day, we pray that you would anoint these lips of clay that we may teach and preach your word on the edification. Somebody came looking for a miracle. Somebody came looking for a touch. Somebody need a healing. Somebody need deliverance. We just received a phone call, Lord. A young lady that has the virus, we were praying for over the phone. Amen. You sent your word. You sent your word, God. You're everywhere. At the same time, we ask you to touch not only her, but we ask you to touch everyone that has the virus. Everyone, Lord, that's sick in their bodies. You're a healer. You're the great physician. And we look to the hills from which come our help. Well, our help don't come from the hills. But we know that our help come from you. Hide me behind your glory. That the people may see you and not us. We'll be so careful. We give your name to praise and all of the glory and all of the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Paul here is saying, I die daily. I die daily. When we are born again, we were born first, we're born, amen, and they really don't know when we're born. We're just here, and all of a sudden, we reach a certain age where we begin to figure things out, but we're just born. But when you're born again, everybody who was born because of Adam's sin is born in sin. I don't care how pretty your baby is. I don't care how pretty your, your husband or your wife is. I don't care 
When you're born in this world, you're born in your sin. In Adam, we all were made sinners, shaped in iniquity. The second birth is being born again, and you can remember when you are born again. The first birth is a fleshly birth, and you have a nature, you have a sin nature. Uh, the second verse is a spiritual birth. It is being connected. We are born again, amen, through the flesh. But when we're born again in Christ, we take on his divine nature. We receive the spirit of adoption. Sometimes there are children that really may not even know their parents or whatever, and they are adopted. And, and, and they take on, when they are adopted, they take on the spirit of the adopted family. That is what happened with us when we were born again. Amen. Jesus is the son of God. When we are born again and Christ comes into our hearts, amen. Now we become children of God. We become children of God being adopted in the family that's in heaven. So we got relatives that have already gone and we got kinfolk that have already gone. One day we're going to get out of here. And we are planning on going and meeting our relatives. That is if we all make it in the kingdom. Can I get a witness? Amen. Now, now we can say amen that how God has really touched our lives and how he has really blessed us. Amen. How he has really delivered us. Our Father, our God. And now we become sons. We become adopted into the family of God. Not only that, we become heirs. Everything that God has given our brother Jesus. We become heirs, not only heirs, but joint heirs in Christ Jesus. So we have, we have a right to the kingdom. We have freedom in the kingdom. And even now while we live on earth, we can be free from sin because of what Christ has done. Amen. He has laid out a plan of salvation where we can be born. We can have God in the midst of the storm. We can have Jesus protecting us and walking with us and helping us in the midst of no matter what we go through. Amen. And just as Christ has suffered, we have to arm ourselves likewise with the same mind. Because he that has suffered, amen, in the flesh has ceased from sin. In other words, I wish I could say in a lot of churches may not deal with dealing with the flesh. A lot of churches may not deal with a lot of things. And we are a part of the body of Christ. And we're a small part, but we're a part of the body. And, 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 and we believe that the body is the temple for God to dwell in. And we believe that you, when God takes over your body, he becomes the controller. And we yield our lives over, y'all getting quiet on me, we yield our lives over to him. Now, I know that we're not perfect, and I know that we don't do uh, uh, a lot of the things that we used to do. Every now and then, we may, may mess up, but there's some things we are not to get involved with. I got two hand claps. I'm going to say that again. There are some things that it don't make no sense for a child of God to get involved with. Am I right about it? Uh, we, may, we may tell a story because somebody told us a story and we repeated this story and the word got out, we said something we shouldn't have said. That's okay, as Paul said, he said, I did it ignorantly. I really didn't know what I was doing. But now, but now, it don't make no sense for a man to go in a bank and rob a bank. Because he know what he do. It don't make no sense for a man to chip in another man's house. 
It don't make no sense for a woman to tip in another. Paul here is saying, I die daily. After you're born again, now it's time to die to the old man and allow the new man to come alive. Allow the new man to give us hope. A lot of new men. We got to walk like we already in the kingdom. We got to live like we already in the kingdom. How can we do that? Christ in us is the hope of glory. As long as we got him in us, he's leading us and guiding us and directing us to the Father's will for our lives. First Corinthians, amen. And we look at, amen, Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. 2 Corinthians 4, I die daily. 2 Corinthians 4, amen, and looking at that seventh verse. But we have this treasure, have the Spirit of God dwelling in us. We have this treasure, having the power of the Holy Ghost dwelling in us. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. We take the same body that we did all that dirt with. Now, God has filled us with his spirit. Now, we have that treasure in an earthly vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Listen, you're not keeping yourself, but it's the power of God that's on the inside that causes us to want to do right, causes us to want to serve him in spirit. And in truth. So, so the treasure is in us. We need God in us. Uh, the song Raven loved so much. Never would have made it without you, Lord. Never could have made it without you being in my life. Some of us have gone through some storms. Some of us have gone through some rain. Some of us have gone through some dark day. Yet God kept us alive. And any time you go through a storm, you become better than the last time. And the next time you go through a storm, you're going to become better. Why? Because the storms make us realize how great God is in us. I ain't talking about nobody around us. I ain't talking about nobody we got to call on. But he's already. We have this treasure. In earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. It never was about us. And without God, we'll go back to doing what we used to do. Lord have mercy. I had never done some of the stuff I did when I walked away from God. But I got into some stuff I didn't know what to do with it. Can I get a witness? See, see, we are who we are because of who we have in us. But when we lose who we got in us, we're going to become what we don't even know. That we have the capacity to even do or to even deal with it. Can I get a witness? That eighth verse said, we are troubled on every side. But with Christ in us, I will not be distressed. If you're a child of God, you don't need to be depressed, oppressed, depressed all day long. There's light in the word of God. And we got to pick up this word, and we got to put that word in our heart, and we got to walk daily, daily, daily. We are hurting, but we're walking daily, daily in the word of God. Can I get a witness? Oh, we're down, but we're not down. And out. Trouble on every side, yet not distress. We are perplexed. Sometimes you don't know which way to go. Sometimes you don't know what to do. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Just because I don't know which way to go, I'm going to stay right here and wait on God. Because sooner or later, he's going to come and tell me which way to go. Can I get a witness? Ninth verse, persecuted. All of us have been persecuted, but not forsaken. See, a lot of people persecuted us but God never forsook us. He's there with us all the time. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always. Even at the end of the world, cast down. 
cast down, but not destroy. Oh, the devil meant it for evil. But God made something good out of it. In, in, in other words, I was crucified. Since I'm crucified with Christ, the thing that should have killed me, it blessed me. The storm that I should have drowned in, it taught me how to swim. And I swam, I swam my way out of the situation. I didn't get no gold medal, but I came out on top. Can I get a witness? But, but that 10th verse is telling what we have to deal with now. Always, always bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus. You see, we're going to go through something because if you suffer with him, you reign with him. So after you get born again, after you get in the church, and we feel like every day going to be Sunday, no, there's going to be some stormy days. Going to be some rainy days. And what Paul's encouraging the people of God, he said, always bearing about in our bodies the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in us. In other words, God allow us to be born again, but he teaches us through tests. He teaches us through allowing us to feel some pain. Now, he took his son, who knew no sin, and gave him a gruesome death. I mean, nobody took a death like he took. But you know what? He did all of that. So we, one day, could come behind him. And every point that he suffered in, he was tempted like as we are, but yet he conquered it. And now in him, when we have him and we're crucified in him, we can conquer anything that God allows to come our way. The old folk put it this way. He won't put no more on you than you can bear. But it does come with some trouble. If you ain't never been lied on, keep living. If you ain't never been talked about, keep living. Kind of get a witness. Amen. You keep, keep living. Keep trusting God. Somebody sooner or later going to put a lie on you. And then you can't go and get your gun. Kind of get a witness. In other words, the person who went and, and talked about you and persecuted you, that's the one you got to have enough strength or enough God in you to love them. That's the test. That's the test. Can you love your enemies? Anybody can give to the family member, but the, the lady next door that called the police on you and they never should have called them in the first place. Can, when she needs some food, can you take food next door? You ain't even got to get in your car. Just go next door. Somebody said, why are you going next door? Because you said love your neighbor. Like you do your, 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 your. It's quiet. Y'all getting quiet on me. Now look at your neighbor. That's a test. That's a test. That's a test. God will, God will send somebody to you that need help. That's a test. And God ain't going to tell you what to do before they come. God's going to send them there. And when they show up, it's going to be on you to make a decision. And you got to make the call. If your heart is right and you pass that test, get ready. Because God's going to give you double for your trouble. You didn't get that. You didn't get that. You didn't get that. I be looking for somebody to bless. When I go out, I'm looking for somebody to bless. The other day, me, I was in the, in the car waiting on first lady to get out of the doctor's office. The lady rolled by, I think I told this before, and, and it was raining. It was raining. And, and I had an umbrella in the car. Didn't have one umbrella in the car. And, and the lady raining, the spirit said, give her the umbrella. Oh, my God. Oh my God, I'm going to get wet. Give her the amarella. I gave her the amarella. I said, ma'am, ma'am. I said, huh, take this amarella. I said, you can have it. Keep the amarella. She said, thank you, sir. But you know what? I need some money. 
Now I got to reach in my wallet and give girlfriend some money. She went to QT, and on the way back, she walked right by where I was, and she had some food, and she had some to drink in her hand. And I thank God, not only did she need an umbrella, but she also needed some food because she wanted to get some food at QT. In other words, I was just sitting right there waiting on God. I said, God, you go, oh, you got the blood. Give, and it shall be given what? Under you, good measures, pressed down, shaken together. What? What? How many of y'all want to run over blessing? How many of y'all want to God to fill the refrigerator up, fill the house up, pay the bills off? God can do more for you than anybody else. <laughs> God don't divide. God don't subtract. He multiply. He add. He add. The prophet told that widow woman, say, if you give me some food first, uh, your, your meal bear will never. It'll never run out. Can I get a witness? I better leave that alone. Let me leave that alone. See, I better leave that alone. I feel the praise in here. Somebody here know what I'm talking about. Somebody been down and out and they gave somebody something. Oh my God. Hey. Won't he do it? Won't he make a way out of nowhere? Won't he open a door? And nobody can shut that door. Won't he shut a door that can't nobody open? That's the God that we serve. You don't have to trust yourself. Trust your father. He'll make a way out of no way. I feel a breakthrough in here right now. We can't do it like we used to do it, but I dare you jump up and turn around one time and sit back down. bearing about in my in my body see when I'm on vacation he's in my body when I'm on, when I'm at work he's in my body when I'm on the job he's in my body always be. take the law with you everywhere you go you gonna need it you guys they say he's in me he's in me I, I can feel the move Always a bearing about the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life also of Jesus may be made known. See, now that he's gone, we got to feed the hungry. He fed 5,000 men. Now that he's gone, we've got to be representatives of him. Can I get a witness? Not only that, not only that. Amen. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. That the life also of Jesus Christ might be made manifested in our mortal flesh. So we take his place with him in us, with the Spirit of God guiding us we take the hit then our high priest intercedes when we take the heat and when we give he supply not only what we gave but he adds to it where we can do it again but we can do it again 16th verse for which cause we faint not 
But though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. The more we suffer with him, the more we go through, the more the agony we go through, the more we understand the power. Paul put it this way, when I'm weak, then am I strong. Joseph, whose brothers tried to kill him, Joseph, he said, as for you, bro, you meant it evil. You tried to hurt me. You. Judah hollered out when they had him in the pit, said, don't kill him. Don't kill my brother. The other brothers were ready to kill him. But Judas, but J Judah hollered out, don't kill him. Let's sell him. Ishmaelites. So what they did, they sold him to the Ishmaelites. They went and find a man, Potiphar, and they made their money back by selling him to him. But Potiphar was a friend of Pharaoh. And you know the rest of the story. Wind up the Ishmaelites yeah. were descendants of Ishmael. Oh. Somebody said, well, who was Ishmael? Ishmael was, since Sarah couldn't have Abraham a baby, she told a maid to come here and help me out. And Abraham helped out too, and, and they wind up with the baby and the baby was named Ishmael. God know what he's doing. Instead of killing Joseph, who was Jacob's son, God had the Ishmaelites to save Joseph. Joseph later became second in command in Egypt. Not only that, but Jacob Joseph turned around and saved the whole family, including his brother. God will put you in the pit. God will allow you to go through some stuff that you don't think you can come out. But in the 50th chapter by, uh, 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 of, of Genesis, jo uh, jo Joseph said, as for you, bro, you meant it unto me, unto evil. But God meant it unto good. Hang on in there. Don't lose what you got on the inside. Don't lose what God has given you on the inside because it's a, it'll work on the outside. It can get you through whatever you get into. Joseph, Joseph didn't have what we got. Joseph didn't see Jesus. You said, well, we didn't see him either. No, but he's sure living on the inside. And all I got to do is call on his name. I don't have to go and do nothing but holler Jesus. And I have immediate access to the throne of God. I looked up that term adoption. And when you get adopted in the family, it says you have access to grace. When you get adopted in the family, not only do you become an heir, but you have access to the grace, the mercy. You have access to the throne of God. Now, you can call God in your house, and you can reach his throne. 
Why? Because you have been adopted into the royal family. No matter what you go through, one moment in the kingdom, you're going to forget about it all. Old folks used to say, soon as my feet strike down. I changed it. I changed it. Because your feet can't strike Zion because ain't, ain't nothing getting in Zion. So you got to lose it on this side. So you got to lose it before you hit your feet in the city. I thought y'all would get that. I got to explain it. I got about five minutes. Now I got to explain that. You, you, they say, as soon as my feet strike Zion, I'm going to lay down my heavy burden. No. You ain't getting in no heaven with a heavy burden. <laughs> you got to lay it down down here. You can't even get on the cloud with a heavy burden. You got to lay it down down here. When Jesus shot, you can't say, hold it, Jesus. I got to go back and repent. You got to lay it down when you see your neighbor. I better leave that alone. See, I was taught that when somebody hurts you, you got to have a quick forgiving spirit. When somebody allow you or, or hurt you or walk out of your life, you got to have a quick forgiving spirit. In other words, you got to have enough power to let it go. Drop it. Let it go. God will send you somebody else. You got to have enough power to release it. You can't hold grudges and serve God. Because God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. You got to love your enemies. You're going to be persecuted for my sake. But you're connected. So you ain't going to get in Zion trying to lay down a burden. When somebody burden you down, he said, cast your care upon me, for I carry it for you. He said, no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. Can I get a witness? Paul said, I can do all things. Somebody said, well, Bishop, after preaching 37 years, you know, pastoring 37 years, how are you still standing? Because I can do all things through Christ. The reason why I wear a vest, you can't see some stripes, but I can do all things through Christ. I'm going to come out of winter. I, I wish I had a gold medal right now. I wish I had a gold medal right now. Say, why you want a gold medal? Because I got the gold. I'm going to get the gold. I don't want no silver. I don't want no bronze. But I got to have, I'm going to run until I get the gold. I'm going to press until I get the gold. I got to have the gold. The streets. I dare you to just well take a step or two, at least a step or two. Like you walking on go, like you you walking on go. Coronavirus went in the hospital. You may not have went in there, but you're still alive. How many in here? Throw your hands up. Well, you ought to at least give them a, a, a two minute prayer.
Come on, put those hands together and praise him. Hallelujah. Together with Barry. If God's been good to you, wave your hands. If He made a way for you, leap for joy. If He made a way, if He woke you up this morning, give Him a praise. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Didn't he wake you up this morning? Didn't he stop you on your way? Didn't he put food on your table? When they said you weren't going to make it, you made it anyway. That's enough to shout. That's enough to give him praise. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Amen. 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 Bishop preached today, didn't he? Amen. Praise God. Hey man, I feel a good, it's a good spirit in here. Hey man, that spirit today can chase down anything. Anything that's fighting you should be gone already. Because we believe in the supernatural, amen. Hey amen. Hey has God been good to you? Hey amen. Didn't he see you through? Hey amen. Is there anyone today that do not know Christ? Hey amen. We wouldn't leave today without offering you Christ. Hey amen. You can stand, wave your hand. Pray with you. We want you to know this Savior, this one that's redeemed us from all sin, bound in iniquity, but now we're free, living a good life, the best of both worlds. Amen. How many live in the best of both worlds? Amen. We thank God. Amen. You can stand. We're going to be dismissed today. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. There's a sweet, sweet spirit. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. For I know 